Hi there, my name is Aya, you're watching Aya Read, and I'm here to do a recommendations video for a trope that is hit or miss for a lot of people and it's the slow burn romance. For me, I love a slow burn romance as long as it's done well. Like I feel like you have to really strike the balance as an author to leave your readers wanting more, but then giving it to them right before it gets too much. And I think all of these books have done that very well. I have nine books to recommend you guys. Seven of them are contemporary romances, one is a fantasy romance, and one is a historical romance. So as always, I'm gonna start with the contemporary romances first. Starting with Book Lovers by Emily Henry. So this is about Nora and Charlie. Nora is an agent for authors and Charlie is this cutthroat editor. And like two years ago, they had this interaction that was not <laughs> a nice one. So ever since then, she just thought that he was a jerk and she didn't want anything to do with him. And now her sister wants her to go with her on this getaway trip to this small town. And there she sees the editor because he's from this small town. And he tells her that he wants to edit her biggest author's work and I believe he insulted that author before so Libby is uh, or Nora is very protective of her author so she like she at first doesn't want to and then eventually she agrees when she agrees they do have to work together working on this book because the author is not there so everything has to go through Nora and while doing that they constantly run into each other and eventually they do fall in love. So this is definitely a slow burn. Like, first of all, it starts from, she kind of hates him. Then she reluctant, they become reluctant allies and work partners. And then eventually a friendship built. And then eventually they do fall in love. So yeah, this is definitely slow burn in my book. While I'm talking about this, I do realize that I forgot a lot of things about this. This is not my favorite Emily Henry, but I do believe I gave it four stars. So I would recommend it. And a lot of her books actually are pretty slow burn. So if you're a big slow burn fan, I would say definitely check out Emily Henry. Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Boy, oh boy, this is probably my definition of a slow burn romance because they don't actually get together until like maybe the last 40 pages. And even then, there's still the case of a third act breakup. So this, like, like I said, definition of a slow burn romance. And I do have to say, as much as I really enjoy this book and as much as I do enjoy Abby Jimenez, for me, this crossed the line a little bit as far as slow burn is concerned. Like what I told you before, like there's this balance that authors have to strike. For me, this turned into too much of a slow burn. But let me just explain first. So this uh, follows Brianna and Jacob. And Brianna works in this hospital and she was under the assumption that she was gonna get this promotion. But then this new hotshot doc shows up and her boss makes it seem like he's a very big contender for this promotion. So she off the bat hates him. And he, when he first got there, he made some crucial mistakes that makes him not really loved by the nurses. And also Brianna just doesn't like him. And he, since he has a very, very big case of social anxiety, and he realizes that he made some stupid mistakes. There were mistakes mainly because of his social anxiety. Like he didn't mean to make people uncomfortable. So he writes her this letter saying that he respects her and saying that he's not there for the promotion. And most importantly, he explains all their interactions from his point of view. And because of that letter, she immediately realizes that she was the asshole in the equation. So they start off this friendship. Her brother also has some sort of social anxiety, so she knows perfectly how to deal with his social anxiety. They become really good friends. Eventually, they actually start fake dating too. And I think Abby thought that because there was a lot of fake dating, it was fine for it to become this slow burn because you do get some cute interactions of them fake dating. The reason he wants to fake date is because his brother got together with Jacob's ex. His family, since they're very nice, they chose his side, meaning they refused to accept his brother's girlfriend. They refused to accept the relationship. Eventually his brother gets engaged and they refuse to come to the wedding. And Jacob just wants to smooth things over. And he eventually realizes that his girlfriend and him were never really a big, a good match. So he wants to fake date just to get 
his family off his back because he thinks that once they find out that he's moved on, then they can finally be happy for his brother. Brianna agrees, especially when she finds out that he, Jacob, donated or wants to donate his kidney to her brother. So her brother has kidney failure and he desperately needed a kidney. And since the same thing happened to Jacob's mom years ago, he always wanted to give that back to somebody else. So when he finds out that he's a perfect match for Brianna's brother, he files the paperwork immediately. She eventually finds out and so she loves him even more, of course, and then their fake dating starts and eventually because of their fake dating, they also have to live together. But this to me is the definition of a slow burn because it does like, if you look at amount of pages, it does take so long for them to finally actually be in a relationship and that is just, I just prefer to see my couples in love and actually happy for a good portion of the book. It doesn't have to be the whole book, obviously, but I did feel like we spent a lot of time with them being friends, a lot of time with them fake dating, and then when they finally do get together, the portion of them being together is just too short for me that I just wanted to see more of them. But I do, really, I did really love this book. I, I, do, I do have to say I did give it four stars simply because of that reason. So the uh, slow burn did kind of hinder my enjoyment a little bit. But since I do know that this is a lot of people's favorite book and I can definitely see why because this is such a great book. Like I love both characters, but especially Brianna. She just made me laugh out loud so many times throughout this book. And I have really come to love Abby Jimenez's books. Like I've read three of them and I've given two four stars and one five stars and she's slowly becoming one of my favorite authors. And this is definitely a great one in my opinion. The Right Move by Liz Tom Ford. So for those of you who've been watching my channel for a while, then you know that this is one of my favorite books of all time. So any excuse I can to recommend this book, I will. So this book, you follow Ryan and Indy. And this is, uh, Ryan is a professional basketball player and Indy is a flight attendant. And Indy's actually Ryan's twin sister's best friend. And Ryan's twin sister, Stevie, used to live with him. But now since she had the first book, she's now moved in with her boyfriend and she knows that Ryan has a room available. Uh, although technically he doesn't need to rent it out. The only reason he allowed his sister to live with him was because he loved her and he cared about her. But obviously he's a professional basketball player. He doesn't need the money. But in uh, CV's friend Indy, her long-term boyfriend cheats on her and now she really has nowhere to stay. So CV asks her brother if Indy can move in temporarily. He reluctantly agrees only for his sister's sake because he <laughs> had some weird interactions with Indy in the first book and he's just, he, it's not that he doesn't like her, he just is not really that excited to have a stranger move into his house and especially not a stranger that he had some weird interactions with. Like I said, he reluctantly agrees. So now they have to live together. He makes the rent as cheap as possible so that she can move out as soon as possible. But eventually they also have to fake date because like I said, he's a professional basketball player. He's a very, very good one. He's the captain of the team, but his general manager told him that he's a lone wolf. He's not gonna reach his full potential if he doesn't change a little bit. If he keeps going the way he's going and not allowing people into his life, then he'll never reach his full potential. And since Ryan wants to prove him wrong and wants to get on his good side, he thinks that a girlfriend would help. So they fake date. And this just has some of my favorite tropes, fake dating, the roommate to lovers trope. And this is just one of like, this is a perfect book in my opinion, but this is a big slow burn because of several reasons. The first being that Indy just broke up with her boyfriend. So she is just slowly figuring herself out, being single for the first time in a long time. But also the main problem here is mainly Ryan. Something happened in his past that make, made him very, very distrustful of people and also makes him celibate. So that is basically <laughs> the hang up in their relationship. They do become friends first and there are some little tiny moments that make it clear that they do care about each other and that they do find each other attractive, but them actually dating, that does take a while. But I was here every step of the way. This to me is like the perfect book that does the slow, burn really well and add to that the fake dating that was a good way to still have us see these beautiful coupley moments without them actually being a couple but then comparing it to yours truly which obviously did the same thing this couple did it didn't take as long for the couple to actually get together in this book which is why i prefer this one but these are similar to each other so if you 
in a way because they both have like the fake dating and also the roommate to lovers. So if you like this one, check out this one and the other way around. Powerless by Elsie Silver. So this is mainly slow burn in regards to the years that these people have been pining for each other. So this is the third book in the Chestnut Spring series and you follow Jasper and Sloane. And Jasper is the adopted Eden brother and Sloane is their cousin. And by adopted, I mean when he was 15. So he had a horrible home life. Something happened which made his parents not really be fit to be parents. And Bo, who is one of the Eatons, helps him when he sees that he's been living in his car. So when he was 15, he was basically... He basically started living with the Eatons. And when he was 15 and Sloane was 10, that was when they first met. And ever since she first saw him, she immediately developed a crush on him and her unrequited love started. So she was 10 and she was in love with the 15 year old newly adopted Eaton brother. He at that time obviously <laughs> couldn't have a relationship with her because obviously she was 10 and he was 15. Throughout the years, while she was a teenager, she made her feelings known and he rejected her over and over again. Now, years later, she has just decided to move on. Her family is very, very rich. She's like a socialite. And well, I mean, from a socialite family, she's not really one. She's a ballerina, but her father sets her up with this guy and she eventually gets engaged to him and is getting married to him. But on her wedding day, she gets a video of her fiance cheating on her. So she does a runaway bride situation and asks Jasper to take her away. After that, they finally start talking about feelings and who's been pining for who all these years. I do have to say, this wasn't just all unrequited love. Yes, that was a big aspect, but they were also very good friends. Like Jasper told Sloane things that he'd never told anybody else before. So this is a friends to lovers. This is a pining heroine and maybe a pining hero. There are some scenes in here that live in my mind rent free even after like a year of after I read this one. The crawl to me scene, I find myself just thinking about that every once in a while. This is my favorite book in the Chestnut Spring series. Also Jasper is a hockey player, professional hockey player. So if you love hockey romances, this is like the perfect mix of like a cowboy romance and a hockey romance. She's a ballerina. Which, yeah, I just, I really loved it. But like I said, this is definitely slow burn. If you look at pages, it's not that, like, it, you don't have to wait hundreds and hundreds of pages for them finally to get together. But if you look at the span of their lives, then it is slow burn because ever since they were both adults, they have had feelings for each other, but they never acted on it. So, yeah. On the Island by Tracy Garvis Graves. So this is a older woman, younger man romance. You follow TJ and Anna, and when she's 30 and he's... 17 going on 18 they travel together to the Maldives so that she can tutor him while on vacation basically he had cancer and because of that he had fallen behind on school obviously and since his parents are very rich they decided to hire the tutor for him but they also wanted him to have a fun summer so they decided to take the tutor with them on vacation and because of romance reasons the parents went on ahead on their own plane and then TJ and Anna would follow in like a different plane and that plane crashes and they end up stuck together on a deserted island for years and they basically have to rely on each other for survival, for warmth, for everything. At first they have hope that they might get rescued but obviously weeks, months and years later at one point they've given up on that hope and eventually they do fall in love. I do have to say, obviously he's 17 when they first start. Nothing starts until he's like well over the age of like 18, 19. Maybe he's even 20 when they finally do get romantically involved. Obviously this is slow burn for several different reasons. First of all, when they first strand on this island, he's still underage. So obviously nothing will happen. And then while they are on this island, in her mind, they would never ever be a couple if not for the situation that they were in. So she's very reluctant to start anything up with this kid. Like in her, like she was supposed to tutor him. She's a teacher. Like she would never think that they would ever be a thing. And at first she's not attracted to him at all since he's like a scrawny 17 year old. But since they both have to survive on this island, he's turned into like this um, strong man who has, uh, like they've both helped each other out and they've both, saved each other in a lot of different ways. So once again, they become friends first because obviously they only have each other to rely on and then ultimately they do fall in love. And that that takes a while in the story 
but also it takes like it takes years upon years for them to finally get together and yeah i really loved it this is an iconic book for a reason because this was published in 2014 or 2011 even and i still think it holds up to this day and yeah this is like an iconic older woman younger man romance but i think she did like she did a beautiful job with it. In the Likely Event by Rebecca Yaros. So this is a military romance. You follow Izzy and Nate and they meet for the first time on the same day their plane crashes. So they meet on this plane. She's very scared to fly. He's never flown before and then their plane crashes. He saves her in a way and then seemingly by fate they keep being thrown together. She's a rich girl and he is like, he doesn't really have anything except for the military. Even though they keep meeting, he constantly keeps her at a distance because he doesn't want to shackle himself to her, even though she would be more than willing to be shackled by him. This is basically told in two different timelines. So the one timeline takes place in Afghanistan right before the Taliban takes over again. He's in like the special forces. She works for this politician and when she first sees him, she basically, I think she slaps him. I don't know. She's very angry at him, telling him that she thought he was dead for three years. And that is the one timeline. And the other timeline is what I just described. So the seeing them meet for the first time and then seeing all their interactions throughout the seven years that they've known each other before they see each other again in Afghanistan. And throughout those seven years, you find out what happened to them and why they ended up the way they did. So you see them meet for the first time, like I said, but you also see them meeting again and again and nothing really happening. And then you see a brief period of them trying, but it not working. And that is basically where the slow burn takes place. It's not in Afghanistan because that part is not slow burn, but the seven years that I just described, that is very much slow burn. Like they constantly keep getting, they keep seeing each other they keep meeting at places and it never, they never really have a relationship until like the very end. This was beautiful in my opinion. It's one of my favorite books I read in 2023 and I would highly, highly recommend it. And uh, this is a very good slow burn, second chance military romance in my opinion. And then the last contemporary romance is Wildfire by Hannah Grace. So this is actually another way that slow burn can happen where you have the physical attraction out of the way real fast because this actually starts with a one night stand and then they go back and nothing happens for a while until things finally do happen and they get in, in a relationship. Basically you follow Russ and Aurora and Russ is a hockey player and this is a college romance and Aurora, like I said, they have a one night stand at this hockey camp or this hockey party. She leaves actually after the one night stand and but then they meet again at this summer camp. They don't know that they, they don't know about the other one also going to the summer camp. So Russ is taken aback. He's not really nice to her in the beginning, but while they work together, they do get closer. They do become friends. There is a, a no staff fraternization policy. So they technically are not supposed to fraternize, but obviously since they do become closer and since they do know that they work in the bedroom, eventually feelings bubble over and uh, they cannot really resist each other. I also like this type of slow burn romance where it does start off sexy in the beginning, but then they have to take a break for some reason. And then slowly they get together. I really love this book. I also read Icebreaker and of the two, I do definitely prefer this one. Actually, the third book comes out in August, so I cannot wait. But yeah, I really love this book and it was a great um, slow burn in my opinion. For my fantasy romance is actually a fan fiction. And this is like, the ultimate heartbreaking, torturous slow burn ever, and it's Manacled by Senlin Yu. So this actually got picked up by a traditional publisher and it's gonna get re-released as Alchemize. I believe it's gonna be a duology, but it doesn't, I believe it comes out beginning of 2025. But for Manacled, this is a Harry Potter fan fiction. It's a Draymine fan fiction, so Draco and Hermione. And this story is sold in three different parts. The first is the present, then there's a big chunk of flashbacks, and then we're back to the present again. And this is a very, very bleak dark world where the Dark Lord has won, and basically the wizarding world is now basically the Handmaid's Tale. So pure blood wizarding families are not having babies anymore. So Voldemort forces muggle-borns and half-bloods to become basically handmaidens for these 
pure blood wizards. So they they get sent to to one of those families, and basically they have to get raped until they're pregnant, and then they either they have another child or they get sent to a different wizarding family. Hermione is a special case since she knows something about the rebellion and the Order of the Phoenix and Voldemort wants that information. So he sends her to Malfoy, who's a very powerful Occlumens and he's also his right-hand man. And when she's there, he obviously rapes her, but he also tries to invade her mind to get her memories. But there's something up with her, Hermione and Draco. I told you this is a romance and it is a romance. So th that all gets revealed in the flashbacks and all the flashbacks is basically a slow, torturous, <laughs> slow, the slowest of the slowest of burns. And I, that is I, really all I can say about it. But this is once again, one of my favorite books I read last year. I'm very glad that it got picked up by a traditional publisher, but I do have to say, I am interested to see how she, she obviously has to change a lot because it's based on both Harry Potter and The Handmaid's Tale very interested to see what changes she's going to make. But for now, Manacled on its own is a masterpiece, in my opinion. I really, really loved it. I loved that romance. And I, I just loved, I loved the way she constructed the whole thing. I loved how actions have true and heartbreaking consequences. Even though this does end in an HEA, it did still make me cry. Like I cried in the HEA because like in their epilogues, because it was still, it was just heartbreaking still. I loved Draco. I thought, like, I just wanted to cry. Like, every time I think about him, I kind of want to cry for him. And yeah, I just, this was beautiful. I haven't reread it yet because first of all, it's very long. And also I don't think my heart can take it now, but maybe in the future I will reread it. But this is beautiful and very, very slow burn. Last but not least is my one historical romance and it's Tempt Me at Twilight by Lisa Kleypes. I'm sure you cannot see this one. So I'll have a picture here. This, I think, I believe is yeah, I think it's the third book in the um, Wallflower series, which is one of my favorite series of all time. You follow Poppy and Harry and they meet and they're both kind of intrigued by each other. She more so, like he more so than her. He's a very rich man. Basically, it's like a billionaire romance in historical, in a historical setting. He's this hotel owner and her family is staying at his hotel and he will basically do anything to win her, including playing some very dirty trick. So this kind of borders on the line of a dark romance. Like he does something that she finds unforgivable. So they actually get married. He does something that makes her, she, I think she was engaged to somebody else and he ruined that for her. And now when he asks her to marry him, she feels like she doesn't have any other choice. And when they finally are married, she realizes what he's done. And then she vows to never love him. And he has to find a way to get her to forgive him and then get her to fall in love with him. And that is once again, where the slow burn comes in. They have to be around each other because she technically is his wife, but she really doesn't want anything to do with him. So the slow burn comes in, like the slow burn is really him trying to convince her that she can love him and trying to get her to forgive him. I really loved it. Lisa Kleypas is definitely a favorite author of mine and Tell Me at Twilight was very great in my opinion. So, yeah, those were all my recommendations for a slow burn romance. Definitely let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books and what your thoughts were. Also, I would really love to know if you have any slow burn recommendations for me. I already told you guys what kind I'm looking for. So if you have recommendations for a good slow burn romance, leave those in the comments below. And if you want to say that you are here, but don't want to leave a comment, leave me a fire emoji for wildfire. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Definitely let me know by leaving a like if you did. And thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you later. Bye.